Hey everybody. It's ugly sweater day in my office. <laughs> and my office is just me, so uh, you know, I have to put up with my ugly sweater today. Thursday, December 21st, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Wealthy Writer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have about 12 episodes so far. Um, giving you advice on how to succeed and some of the stumbling blocks along the way. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be having this flashing at you. It's cute, right? Cute, ugly sweater. But uh, if it's distracting, I might have to take it off. Take it off. Yeah, right. I'm going to strip. There's your Christmas present. <laughs> Turn it off. Oh, it's been a long week. Sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, a bit, of a, a bit of a raspy throat here, so I apologize for my raspiness, but uh, I'm excited about the topic today. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I can see myself and this is flashing at me and it's distracting me. I'm easily distracted though. I'm either easily distracted or I get so involved in my work that they have to go, people who you know, are in my household have to go, Heather, Heather, to get my attention. So I'm both extremes of that. Cheers, this is my sleigh ride tea. It even has little pieces of popcorn in it. It smells so good. Like you're taking a sleigh ride in winter, and since I'm Canadian. All right, so the topic today is, I'm really excited to talk about it um, because a lot of authors have written me over the years, especially lately. I just had somebody put this on their Facebook. You know, that they're ready to put a book out and they, they really want to write the book, but then when they consider publishing it, either way, traditionally or self-publishing, they say, what if I suck? What if my writing is terrible and people hate it and it gets horrible reviews? Well, obviously, and this is what any teacher or parent would say, so you've heard it before, well, you never know if you don't try. Yeah, but I have another scenario and that's it. What if you don't suck? And I, I think we have to all consider that because a lot of writers don't even go there that they might be fantastic. They might reach DTK Rowling status. That's so rare. But let's say you, you are really successful at this and you don't see that coming. There's a lot to manage when you're a successful indie author. When you're a successful traditionally published author, there's a lot to manage too, actually, because times have changed and publishers can't do as much for their writers as they used to, um, unless you're one of the mega famous ones they can't do everything for you. So you have to do a lot of your own advertising and, and publicity yourself. And so nobody trains us for that. We're artists. Artists aren't really trained to be hugely successful. And so I think you should actually prepare yourself to do well and, and know that if you do well, are you, this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I have a few questions for you. Are you ready to be successful. I think a lot of us are held back because we're not ready yet. And I know for myself, when I was doing my poetry, I asked myself that question when I was writing poetry books. Oh, I couldn't do a novel. First off, I couldn't pull it off. I couldn't write an entire novel. And secondly, uh, I just don't think it'd be any good. And, and um, you know, so I had all that. I was always worrying about not doing well. I didn't worry about what actually happened was that I did do well. And every day I'm managing different things and I'll talk about them. And I, and by no means am I not grateful for doing well. I am so grateful, but there's some things I've had to give up and some things I've had to get used to and I didn't expect them. So we'll talk, um, settle in with your favorite drink. And, um, this will just be a 15 minute chat. I try to keep them under 15. And then if you want to continue talking and ask me questions, feel free after that's up, after that time's up to go to my Facebook page, uh, Heather Grace Stewart and I do a chat every Thursday at 3.30. It's very informal and I carry on the same topic. Okay, so the question, let's let's pretend that your work isn't up to par or you don't think it is after you've written your book. Your editor is the one who takes care of that. They'll be the one to let you know if this needs work and that needs work. And so don't even worry about that. Just create your piece of art and go for it and don't hold back. And your editor will let you know. Um, in fact, your editor, let's, let's go both scenarios. Traditionally published editors will go through the work and they'll send you back a, a, a manuscript that you have to go over and you have to change. So there's rewrites. Um, 
then you have better readers, which I think I'm saying wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm Canadian, so who cares? I can say things how I want to say. You guys still love us? Beta? It's either beta. I'm going to say beta. I think it's beta readers. First time readers of your work who will also give you suggestions of things that you could improve or not. I've had that happen um, many times where they just said, oh, I love it. But the editor had already gone through and we'd had our, our first and second edits. So your traditionally published editor will have an entire process for you to improve your work. So don't worry about that right now. Don't go there. Just write the book. Get the book written, which I've talked about in my previous episodes, how to put the time in and get that done and how to fork your monsters. That means, you know, your monsters and just tell them to go to the door and stop messing with your brain, messing with your self-confidence. So there's all that. And I have discussed that in other episodes. In this one, I just want to explain that if you send it to an editor um, that you've gotten with the traditionally published firm, they'll look after that. So just get writing and get the book finished. Don't self doubt anymore. Just do it. And then they'll work through it with you and make it the best it can be. As far as uh, self published works, that's a little different. And I highly recommend in fact, I, 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 I will not speak to you anymore <laughs> if you don't do this. Let's not put a bad name out there for indie authors. Let's make indie authors, let's prove that we can do as good work as, as those who just don't, aren't are traditionally published. There's just not enough traditional publishers for all of us creative people. That's all it is. There's not enough space. So believe in your work. Do the best work you can do as a writer and then hire someone. This is what I'm saying. I, you have to hire somebody who is a reputable editor. And my suggestion, if you're Canadian, is Morning Rain Publishing, which is my editor. They offer amazing author services. Um, and, and there are fees, of course, for good editing. But don't ever pay an upfront kind of fee ever. It's, it's per word. And you need to have uh, people recommending them like I just did for Morning Rain. Don't just choose any editor off the internet. It could be a complete scam. Uh, writers are often scammed because now we're a huge business and the self-publishing industry is a huge business. So be careful who you hire. Hire someone who comes highly recommended and um, and then uh, that person should not charge you any kind of fees or um, I've heard about this where someone say, well, there was all these fees before I even got to editing. That's not right. They should be charging you per word that they edit, um, possibly by the hour, but just make sure they come recommended, okay? Um, and so those people will be the ones who tell you whether your work sucks or not. Don't be your own worst critic. Let them tell you. They won't say it like that. But let them be the judge. They're the professionals. As long as you hire a professional, you get a professional opinion. And then after the editor looks at it, you'll have the beta readers and they will look at it and they'll give you a feel for what they think of it. Um, and if it's a finished product, let's hope that in my case, it's often been that they love it and they give a review. Um, some people do other processes and they have a halfway through process where people read it. It depends on who you hire. Um, <clears throat> I'm sounding really rasp. I really hope I'm not going to be sick. I'm also getting excited because it's an awesome topic because really everybody says, oh, I probably suck, I probably suck. And what we're most afraid of is being inadequate and not, and I mean, sorry, I said that wrong. <sighs> Good thing this is my last video for a few weeks, right? I need a break. <laughs> well, I always do these off the, the cuff. So you get candid me and I often misspeak because my brain moves faster than my mouth. That's what everybody always says about me. All right. Um, uh, I want to read what the beautiful poem is that is being saying it right. I'm saying it wrong. It's called Our Deepest Fear. And uh, I'd like to read this to you as a little Christmas poem, okay? Um, it's by Miriam Williamson. And it's not a poem, in fact. It's from the book A Return to Love. And I love this. And I think this will give you more insight into what I'm saying. That a lot of us, be us artists or anything in life, are afraid of our own power and you can't be like that don't do that to yourself so this is by marianne williamson and it's from the book a return to love our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure it is our light not our darkness that most frightens us we ask ourselves who am i to be brilliant 
gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is the reason, this has been a tremendous year for me, um, besides just learning that I sold audio rights to the ticket, so it'll be an audio book. I decided to do these videos, and one of the reasons why I decided to do the videos was exactly what Marianne Williamson says. I felt that I could offer permission to all of you to to have the kind of success I've had, to offer you insight, but also permission to, to as she said, what did she say, our, as we are liberated from our fear. And I haven't been completely liberated from my fear. Are you kidding me? Every piece of work I ever work on, I question. And then, you know, I mean, I'm always going to doubt, but you have to push through the fear and be liberated from that fear overall. Overall, I have been, because here I have published three novels now. And, uh, because of that, I've had some success, small success that I'm really pleased to have. But this is another part of why I'm speaking to you today is to ask you, are you sure that you have prepared yourself to not suck, to do really well and everything that comes with that? And are you prepared to not play small anymore? If you're going to not play small and you're going to succeed, then you have to prepare for social media, for example, um, and dealing with all that and speaking and being in public and standing up and shaking hands and signing books and doing videos. And uh, I haven't quite mastered this one yet, giving up a lot of family time to go and do a country tour, a world tour. I've done little city tours to Ottawa, Kingston, Toronto. I don't want to I don't want to play that big yet because I love my family and I love to stay close to home. That might be something in the future because I know I have some people who keep asking me to come to the UK. Uh, I could name them. My fan Jasmine keeps asking. Okay, so I have a list here of some things. Again, let me preface it by saying I am so grateful for my success in the last three years. But when, so I'm very grateful but when I did become more successful, some things had to change for me. And uh, this is what we're all afraid of. We're afraid of more attention. We're actually subconsciously not afraid of people saying it sucks, but we're afraid of it doing well. And then what does that mean? You have to keep doing well. You have to keep producing. You have, you're only as good as your last book. And you have to start figuring out, I spent a lot of time, I wouldn't say meditation, but a lot of my time now as an author, besides writing and doing marketing, is actually self-care and wellness. This is why I wanted to say the wealthy, wealthy, like W-E-L-L, -L, writer, was was really what the title of these, these videos are. I have to practice mindfulness and uh, calming myself down, staying, calm and not anxious and in the moment as much as I can which really helps me with everything I have to deal with at now as an author who's a public figure hardly known <laughs> but but things happen like the first thing I had to deal with when okay my books started getting known in 2014 and they weren't really that popular until 2016 um, but in that time between then and 2016 when Strangely Incredibly Bigger was released started having to deal with interviews. Interviews can really be stressful. Um, so are you prepared to answer questions that are personal about yourself? And they might be off the cuff on a tele telephone interview, in a TV interview, or it might be um, in by typing an email, which I always preferred because I could think about my answers a bit more. Um, are you ready for that? Are you ready for things like um, my Twitter in 2016 just grew immensely and it was organic. I have never done any kind of buying people. I just was myself and I just tweeted. I do tweet a lot and so I use it a lot and so it has grown. And I had to deal with 
not talking in direct messages anymore. I, I don't use direct messaging and that's been a bit of a disappointment, but I had some pretty gruesome, gruesome is the wrong word, that's for horror. <laughs> Although some might call it horror. I've had some, uh, as women, would, women, women, would, my soul sister women would understand, you don't want to be having your coffee and open a direct message and have something that you didn't ask to get in your direct messages. I got that. I get just a lot of unwanted attention in there and I don't have time to chit chat in there. And I used to chat with my few followers in there and it was lovely and fun. And a lot of them have stayed, have stayed with me and we talk openly in public now on the public part of Twitter, but I can't do my direct messages anymore. I can't go in there. I don't even look because of what can be in there if we know what we're talking about. This can be some gross stuff. Um, unwanted. Unwanted as Alanis Morissette saying once. Um, I had to stop adding just anybody to my Facebook. It became more of a private one for me and my family to use and anybody that knows me in person follows me on there but um, I have a public life and a private life and I had to start differentiating that. That was another thing that I had to start being mindfully aware of so I could set my life up so that it works for me and so that it works for my family too. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for um, maybe having less time to be a good friend? I have tried so hard to stay a friend in other ways. I'm a big texter and I like old-fashioned phone calls still but I used to do long email notes. Now that's kind of just gone out anyways. A lot of people don't write long letters anymore anyways but because of the way my life is now um, there's just not time to sit down at the computer and write a long email. So I've given up and, and especially to fans. I used to do that with fans and I can't do that, but I do pop off emojis, little smiles. Um, I really try to acknowledge all of my fan mail and, uh, I hope I'm doing a good job. You guys can tell me. I try to answer all of you on YouTube. Um, I had to give up worrying what others thought about me. That was one of my biggest fears was people will think that I'm a bitch if I I just said it I hope that doesn't YouTube doesn't censor that out they'll think that I'm a mm, if I uh, don't answer their emails because I don't have time anymore they'll, or if I don't answer the direct messages because I can't do that anymore for my own personal well-being I had to give up worrying I had to stop that. I had to stop worrying what others thought and know that my clo people closest to me know the kind of person I am and I know the kind of person I am. And so there's been a lot of, in 2016, 2017, there's been a lot of uh, self-awareness. Self-awareness. So are you prepared to start looking into yourself and, and being mindful of the kind of life you want so that you can maintain the kind of life you want um, when you start being out in the pub public eye more often. And I, I finally, along with the worrying what others thought about me, I had to give up reading reviews because some of them were just ridiculous trolls that just were trying to compete, other authors trying to compete, is what I've been told. I didn't go and research it. I didn't have time. I don't have time for pettiness or competition because I think we're all on our own path and there's enough room for every single author out there. All of us have our space. And uh, I had to stop reading these one-star reviews that would say things like, I don't know why I read the entire book. I don't know if I just wasted my entire time reading it or if it was good. And I thought, well, you went to the trouble of writing a review and you read the entire book. So uh, saying you don't know if you wasted your time, you're wasting your time writing the review. And that was the last review I read. So uh, I hear from some good friends who go and check that I've got some five stars recently on the ticket. That's awesome. And I can't, I just don't do that to myself. So I had to give that up. And I've asked um, my editors to give me some feedback from the reviews. They can do some feedback. Um, when we're working on my next work, we can look into how I can improve. I'm not going to listen to any kind of criticism if it's not constructive, if it doesn't get me to be, being a better writer. Um, if it's just throwing mud, forget about it. So I've had to give that up. So a lot of it um, is really to do with being part of the public eye. But are you prepared to not suck and then deal with all of the everything that comes with being successful? Are you? So ask yourself that and prepare your mind and your life. I mean, I've set my life up 
like I said, now I have a private Facebook and a public one. And some people were upset, actually. Um, but I just told myself, anybody who would come to my home and be in my home can be on my personal Facebook. And it was for my daughter's privacy, she asked. Uh, so it was just a, a family decision. And I think, um, I'm sure JK Rowling, my, my buddy, <laughs> has talked about all of all that happened to her when she became hugely successful and it's a price you have to pay but it's a beautiful gift that you're given when you're when people are reading your work and admiring your work so you know I wouldn't ever not want it but you have to prepare yourself and so instead of preparing yourself to suck and not do well prepare yourself in 2018 to be a huge success and know that you can be and just do all the steps that I just talked about in your mind to be aware of what could happen. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is a new way. I hope I just flipped it around for you and you see this in a new light. And I hope that you're a holiday if you, I hope you have a holiday and I hope it's lovely and I hope you're safe. Um, please drive safely. And I have, I have something I want to sign off with because a lot of people say, you know, be good to those you love and give those you love a hug when they sign off from some sort of audio or um, video blog. And I think mine's going to be try not to break things or people. And if you f do break something, go fix it. So here's to fixing what's broken and, and on into 2018. Now on into 2018. Let's go fix what's broken. All right. Thanks so much, guys. It's been amazing, and I'm so pleased for all the new subscribers. Thank you for following me. Um, please go to my Facebook page because I'm going to be speaking around this topic and just having a little chat and announcing the winner of my Amazon gift card uh, giveaway. I have one every month. If you go to my website, you can sign up, and you have a chance of winning an Amazon gift card. So I'm going to say Merry Christmas because I celebrate Christmas. Happy whatever you celebrate and have a lovely holiday. And thank you for tuning in to The Wealthy Writer. It's been a lot of fun and I look forward to doing this again. Uh, I'm probably taking next week off, but I'll see you the week after that. Thanks so much, guys.